the grandma, the, the baby mishap. Yeah, not grandma, no, she's wide awake, she's always ready, ready to hear from God. Well, dear Lord, I thank you for this morning, God. I thank you that, that you have something new every morning, that you wake us up, that you give us fresh revelation, that you give us fresh bread, fresh manna from heaven. God, if we're looking for it, if we want it. Lord, we declare that we want it this morning, that we want to hear from you, that we want this to be your words, this to be your time. God, we don't worry about what came before. We don't look at what man does, but we want to know what you're doing in the earth right now. Let this be your service, Holy Spirit. Reign in me, speak through me. People feel your presence. Know that it is. Dad, you want to go ahead and key up that first video? Amen. Sorry, I gotta gotta get out of that habit. I just start going. I'm excited, and then yeah, gotta let you know. Oh, you can pick your head up. <laughs> go ahead, Francis Chan. Yep. Simon says, pat your head, you know, so, okay, you know, Simon. When I was a kid, we used to play this game called Simon Says, right? Most of us have played that, unless you're really young, because there's no app for it. it, it Simon Says is, uh, you know, you just, Simon says, pat your head, you know, so, okay, you know, Simon said it. Um, it's just, it was a very simple game, but it's so weird how in the church, Jesus says, is a totally different game. If Jesus says something, you don't have to do it, you just have to memorize it. Right? You, 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 you study it, you memorize it. You guys, it, it doesn't make any sense. A lot of the things we do, when he tells us to go out and make disciples, and how many people in the, our churches are actually making disciples? They memorized it. You know, when I tell my daughter, hey, hey Rach, go clean your room. She doesn't come back to me two hours later and go, I memorized what you said. <laughs> you said, Rach, go clean your room. I can say it in Greek. <laughs> my friends are going to come over and we're going to have a study on what it would look like if I cleaned my room. She knows better than that. And so why do we think we're going to come before the judge one day and quote everything that he said and talk about how much we know? It's just, it's just this black and white stuff. If I just started with scripture, I'd go, here's what I would do. i would start making disciples. Amen. Right? And I keep wondering, God, what... What were you putting on my heart when I came out here? Why, why, did you want, why did you want me to come out here? Because to tell you the truth, I, didn't never, I never liked church that much. Why do you want to be a pastor? There's parts of church that I like. There's, there are things about church that I very much love. But if the Spirit is not in it, if the Spirit's not in it, and people's lives aren't being changed, then it's just torture. That's just getting together to, to do what? And I don't, I don't feel bad about saying that. Because that's what I wanted my whole life. Because I've, I've felt when God shows up. And I've seen when God shows up. Lives change. People's, people, all the hell that they're going through, all of a sudden that's totally different. Just like Emilio was talking about. But if we just sit there, and if we just read the book, don't, I don't want you to feel guilty. That's not what I'm talking about. I want you to feel motivated. I want you to, to say, man, who can I talk to today? Who needs me? Maybe it's your kids. Maybe it's your kids that aren't getting what they need. What they need from you is to see you walking it out. You know, I thought my kids were hurting when I came out here. But that's not what it was. They're growing. 
They're seeing it every day. They're seeing, oh, we can't sacrifice. Oh, we can't care about people, other people more than ourselves. Oh, we can't hurt for God. We can't cry out. We can't get on our knees. We can, we can lament and say, God, would you do something? Would you show up? I want to honor you. Would your Holy Spirit come down? We can do that. And you can do that for other people if you're willing. If you're not, don't understand why you're here. I didn't queue up that. Hello, I'm Todd Smith, lead pastor of Christ Church in Dawsonville, Georgia, also host church of the North Georgia Revival. Two years ago, I'm walking across our platform in a time of prayer, and I had a vision, an open vision. I'm looking straight toward our baptistry. It was completely empty in the natural, but I see it in the spirit full of water. And on top of the water was a strip of fire, about two and a half to three feet wide and from front to back of our baptistry. Fire on top of the water. That vision lasted about eight to 10 seconds. And as soon, it was, as soon as it was over, the Lord spoke to me and he said, Todd, I'm going to baptize people with Holy Spirit fire. I had no idea the full significance of that vision, but now I do. Ever since then, we have been baptizing people in our baptistry, and they have been encountering the fire of God. Their lives are being changed. I'll never forget the story of a young girl who had tried to commit suicide up to this time 12 different times. She was a self-harmer. She would cut herself. She would literally take a razor blade, and she would slit her wrist, not to commit suicide, so to speak, but literally to feel the pain because it would help her cope with her situation. She came and got baptized in Dawsonville at the North Georgia Revival. And while she was being baptized, she had 30 scars on her arms and on her legs of where she self-mutilated. And in the baptismal waters, Jesus met her. And while she was being baptized, she looked down and all of the scars on her arms and in her legs had disappeared. Jesus, Amen. the healer, Thank you, Lord. the comforter, and the deliverer removed all of the scars from her body. Jesus is wonderful. Jesus met her in the water. And to this day, her name is Tia. She is living and loving Jesus yes. like she's never loved him before, completely set free off all medications, and is a completely different woman. I'm also reminded of the gentleman that had 280 bone tumors, literally cancer in his bones. Hospice had been called in and had only two to three weeks to live. He could not get to the baptismal waters, but, her, but his wife came. And she was baptized on his behalf, not for salvation, but so that the fire of God could touch him. We anointed a towel with oil, dipped it into the water, and I instructed her, I said, as soon as you get home, I want you to lay this towel on his body. Again, the prognosis was not good. Hospice had already been called in, and he was already planning his funeral, two to three weeks to live at most. So she travels home. She places this damp, wet towel on his back as he's lying in the bed. And all of a sudden, the fire of God came upon him. He said to his wife, I no longer feel pain in my back. Well, the next day he had a PET scan that was scheduled. So he gets the test and I got to hear the doctor's very own words. And she said to him, I am looking at your old PET scan and I'm looking at your new PET scan. I'm looking at the old and I'm looking at the new. She said, we see zero tumors in your bones. Yeah. Jesus met him literally in the water by the towel. Jesus healed him. And to this day, he is living a full life. He's going to be able to watch his sons graduate from high school.
to hold his grandchildren on his lap. He is completely 100% healed when he only had two weeks to live. You see, the vision that I saw in that baptistry of fire on the water, where Jesus said, I'm going to baptize my people with Holy Spirit fire, that right now can happen to you. You can encounter the living God. You can encounter the Jesus that saves, heals, and delivers. You see, He loves you. He wants to come into your life. He not only just wants to be a part of your life, He wants to be your entire life. I encourage you, right now, surrender everything to Him. Hold nothing back. Give Him your complete heart. Do not keep a chamber of your life away from Him. For Jesus wants to change you, save you, deliver you, and even heal you. You see, Jesus is good. He is good all the time. Open up your life and surrender it to Him. Amen. Would you pray this prayer with me? Amen. Right there. How many of you have heard it three times? Three times today. Your whole life. A whole lot of Christians, a whole lot of people that are holding a little bit back. Or a lot back. What is it in your life that you need to let go of? Because if you want to see that happen, there's a whole lot of people down there. That's where I went. Beginning of this week, there's a whole lot of people down there that have surrendered totally. Totally, and you know it. You talk to them. It's not about them. There's no, there's no pride in it. You can walk up and talk to these guys. Yes, they do have a Holy Spirit confidence. But I tell you what, there's no pride. All of them talk about how they took their hands off of it. What he didn't tell you there is that he was ready to resign his church. He said we were having good church. That is exactly what I was talking about. It was just good church. Nobody was getting healed. They were just coming, eating, and leaving. He said, God, I'm going to fast for three weeks. If you don't show up, I'm going to resign. I don't care. I don't care about anything but you showing up. In the second week, he got to that point. He told his staff, he said, I'm going to resign. And that's when he had that vision. A little bit after that, God, he felt God telling him there was a pastor down the road that they had been at, basically at war. They had been just totally contentious with each other. Totally not kingdom. Totally not Jesus, right? So he felt like we need to give them a gift for their building project. At that time, he already had a leaky roof in his building. This pastor, Todd Smith, had a leaky roof in their building. He said... God's telling me to give to that, per, that church that I don't like, to their pastor, a gift for their building project. He got together with the elders and they gave him $50,000. $50,000, guess what happened? It broke wide open. That guy came over and now they're ministering with them all the time. All the time. For two years, every single day of the week. You don't do that if the Holy Spirit's not there. You don't do that if God's glory and power isn't empowering you to do that. Can you imagine people giving up that kind of time? Giving up their lives that way. Imagine how that would go if, if we started that right now, how that would go. There'd be so many, and I, and I don't blame you. My, my heart's been the same way. I didn't jump in with, with my pastor. I didn't, I didn't go, yeah, I'm on board. I didn't let go of everything I wanted to do. Because I didn't love people enough. I didn't love Jesus enough, and I was too focused on myself. So I understand. I understand not being there, not being ready. But what I'm going to talk about is that we can get there, that you can get there. You can get to that point where you just all you want to see is people healed, all you want to see is his lives changed, families changed, and your community changed. And then it goes out even further than that. Go ahead and key up that last video. Sorry, the third video. Now this is a guy, he's, going, he's been going all over the U.S., all over the U.S., and worshiping in different cities. And that's all they do. 
And they, they, sometimes the police are coming out because there's different mayors that don't want this to happen, that don't, it's not authorized or whatever. Well, they end up, you'll see, they end up playing or praying with the police, worshiping God with them. Go ahead. This is in Chicago. Normally where people are getting shot. That just makes me want to go out there right now. You know, <laughs> let's just go, you know, march down downtown Rapid City. What would happen? Guess what? People would start coming out. They'd jump in there with you. They don't even know what they're, they don't even know what they're a part of, but they just want to be there because it's like, wow, somebody's excited. Somebody's happy. Somebody doesn't have a mask on. They're not muzzled. They're open. They're excited. They're happy. God, heaven coming down to earth. And I tell you what, that's what was happening in... Georgia, when I was there, that place, that, but it takes, it takes sacrifice. It does. That's the only thing that gets God's attention. The smell of burning flesh. It's when God tells you to go and do something, and you know it's going to hurt. He says, I want your time. I want your time. I want you to come pray. I want you to get with those other men, and I want you to pray. Well, God, I got to go. I got to go work. I, I got to, you know... <laughs> My wife's not going to be happy about that. Oh, well. <laughs> and I know what that means when you say that. Like, oh, well. But if God is calling you to do it, do it. Lay your life down. Let him, let him burn those things out of you that aren't good, that, you're not, that you don't want to give up. There's things inside of you right now that are stopping you. When he, that little small voice tells you, go and do it, you need to get rid of those. Because what's coming on the earth, it's either going to be revival or riot. Derek Prince said there's not a lot of revivals that happen without riots. So you're, and, and God is sifting it out. He's saying, you're either going to be a part of what I'm doing, the kingdom, or you're going to get bitter and scared. I don't, you know, there may be points here in the next few weeks that I invite other pastors in here that we do worship together. That's what God wants. Are you gonna Are you gonna roll with that? Are you gonna be excited for them, or do we need to do our own thing? We need to do God's thing. We need to be a part of the kingdom. Can we go and and 
go to somebody else's youth group. Guess what? I can't. I'm not that great of a youth group leader. I didn't like youth group myself. But I can go support somebody else who wants to do it, who has a heart for it. And I can go with them. Right? And I can jump on. Okay? Because it's not about Dove. It's not about Bethel. It's not about whoever harvest fellowship. You know, it's not, I don't care. It can be not... There's Catholics out there worshiping with that guy. There's Lutherans. Right? Amen? You want to go worship with everybody else? I do. So I don't care how it starts. I don't care who's singing as long as they're praising Jesus, as long as they're preaching the Bible. That's all I care about. That's what we're going to do. Well, come up here, Miss Jerry. Come up here. Don't be scared. Talk about you talk about warriors. Talk about warriors. That's what I'm going to talk about. But that's what it's going to take. It takes warriors for the kingdom because this all starts with prayer. This all starts with prayer. That's where it's always started. That upper room. That's where prayer brought the Holy Spirit here. Jesus made the sacrifice, and he said, go up there and pray until he comes. Well, that's some commitment. Three months. We're praying all the time. Guess what? Jerry would be there. I know that. And she's been praying over me. She's been praying over this city for a very long time, praying over these hills. And she gets attacked all the time because guess what? She's a warrior. God doesn't see short lady. I won't, I won't call you old because your spirit's young. But this cloth, and that's just a point of contact. You know, being, being baptized. Come on, Jim. That's right. Get up here, Jim. Come on, brother. You just, you just support her. Put your hands on her there. That baptismal is just a point of contact. It's not being rebaptized. It's not baptism after salvation, those kind of things. It is just a point of contact. It's a thing that, that a whole bunch of people like Jerry have got around and prayed over that water and said, God, when people get in, just heal them. And I, I heard demons coming out of people. Heard the wailing. Me and my friend that went down there with me, we did not want to leave. It was midnight. And this was on a Monday. How many of you are worn out from work on a Monday? There's people that came straight from work just so they could get in there and pray over people. Person after person, the, the one guy that spends the most time in there, he said, they, people ask me, you know, what's, what's the most memorable one? He just said, next one. Next one. I bet Jerry really, really wanted to get in there. He said, Carl, we want to send you down there. And it's for real. There's a, I've seen a whole lot of fake. I've been around a lot of fake. But when I went down the first time, I saw a purple robe filling up an entire tent. Like just unfurled, coming down from her. I said, you're not done, Carl. <laughs> the guy pushed me back down. And when I went down that time, I could not move. I don't know, it felt like forever. But I saw and felt a dove, like the wings of a dove. I, you know, you can believe it or not, I really don't care, because I know what happened. There's a guy holding me, my big old body holding me, saying, just let it come. Let it come. I'm going to hand this to Jerry. This, this has been prayed over. God, that, that those things in Jerry's life that she keeps getting attacked by. God, we just pray right now that that would just be done with. God, that there is such a hedge of protection and a shield and a hedge around her that nothing can penetrate it. God, that this would be the last time. 
God, that she wouldn't even know what attack means. That she would just rise up to You. That her spirit would rise above it. Whatever chaos and storms are going on around her, whatever the devil tries to bring at her, that she would just rise above it. That her spirit would be lifted up to You just like Stephen. Because God, it's hell when those things come. When those things come, it feels like we're dying, but that her spirit would just be lifted up to You. And then You would receive it. by this cloth, by this point of contact, God, that she would just have that renewal of mind, that her mind is Christ, baptized in the blood of Jesus. You all agree, church? You all agree, church? Yeah. Amen. I'm going to preach. When I've told people this, I felt like Gideon coming. Did not want to be here. Because ever since I've lived in Rapid City, ever since I can remember, as far back as I can remember, you know, being 11 years old, having the same kind of attacks that come at her, I didn't know how to deal with them then. And I did a whole lot of bad stuff trying to trying to ease that pain in my life, trying to ease that, not understanding what was going on. Now I know the nature of the battle. Now I know. And Gideon, he's sitting there in Judges 6. He's in, a, he's in a wine press hiding out because the sons, of, the sons of Midian, the Midian was actually an illegitimate son of Abraham. How many times do we know that the, the things we do in our life birth things that never should have been there? Israel never should have been attacked by Midian, never should have been suppressed by them. But they were. Because of Abraham. Despite all his faith, despite all the things that God wanted to do through him, here they are. Here's Gideon hiding out. God tells him, this angel shows up, and he t one of the things he tells him is to go in the strength that you have. That's kind of what I felt like coming out here. I said, God, I got five kids. What do you want me to do? I, don't, I can't even keep track of my own life right now. And God, I don't want to go back there because I don't want to get attacked. I don't want to get hit all the time. I'm tired of getting hit. But he said, go. He said, go in the strength you have. I felt like the least. I'm not, I'm not the same as my grandpa. I'm not that type of person. But there's a different spirit in me. There's a warrior spirit in me. That's why I want to build an army. I want to build God's army. I don't like getting hit. I want to fight back. And that's what God wants to do here. He wants to raise up an army. And that takes getting on your knees in prayer. Like this. One of the things he says in 16 is, I will be with you. How am I going to defeat him? I will be with you. What more do you need? I don't care if it's two people. I don't care if it's Jerry and Miss Chris. But I know that there's more men here that want to do this. Want to see God show up. That want to get on their knees. That's why I ask you to put that number in your phone. So when I can text you and say, hey, I'm going to be at the church, let's pray. You have the opportunity. There's something special happening. That prayer room is ready to go upstairs. After we're done here, I'm going to walk you through upstairs and I'm going to walk you through downstairs. Because there's a prayer room up there ready. It's made way. It's it's made ready for the king. You can meet him right there. Guess what? There's already people bathing that thing in prayer every single day, every single night. Move on to Judges 7. Gideon had 32,000 men. God tells him that's way too many. I love that. You know? 
That'd be like him telling me in this church, well, you got 50 people. Nah, that's way too many. 30 people got to go. Okay, we'll do 20. How about that, God? No, still too many. Still too many. Tells all those, if you've you got a faint heart, now's the time to go. That's what's coming on in the world. It's going to be a real battle. You've got a faint heart. Hey, that doesn't mean that you're not a Christian. All those guys that left, they were still Israelites. They're still men. Just said, if you want to do battle, you, and you you got a faint heart, just go. That's okay. You can keep some. I'm not saying don't come to church, all that, but <laughs> don't come into that room. Don't say, I want to be a part of it, and then back out. Because guess what? That disheartens everybody around you. Deuteronomy 20, verse 5 says the same thing. It talks about if he's built a house, do you have a distraction? Planted a vineyard, is he engaged? Also, again, if you faint of heart. If you got any of those things going on, they say, hey, just go back. It's not worth having you out in the battle if you're going to back out. If you're going to take the spirit out of those other men. Take the fighting spirit out of those other men because they see you turn around and walk away. I know what that feels like on the basketball court. You know, that's just basketball. Who cares about basketball? But... It was a good training ground. You know, and we're in a conference championship, and I looked, I looked in one of our guards' eyes, and I saw him about ready to piss down their leg. Said, he already lost. I was okay with that. I was like, I already know. It's okay. It's okay. But I knew that fighting them wasn't the same in me that we needed. But I want to fight. Back to Judges 7. He gets it all the way down to 300. 32,000 down to 300. That means there's like me, two other people out of this room. I think we've got a lot more than that. Alert, committed, rid of distractions, fearless, like a dog on a bone. That's how Miss Jerry is about praying. That's how Jim is about praying. Tell you what, they prayed with me before I went. We were just praying over the phone. It was like back when I used to worship with my sister-in-law. It was like an out-of-body experience. Like you know that person is talking to heaven right now. That God can see you right now. He sees right into your soul right now. That kind of prayer. It's not what you look like. It's the condition of he saw something in Gideon that he could use. So I trust him. We were riding home the other day from Pier with my daughter, and the, the radio DJ was saying, does it feel like sometimes you can't trust God? And she goes, of course you can trust God. That's Brittany. If you know, <laughs> if you know my daughters, you would have no doubt about who, which one said that because she's just like my wife. Thank God for her because, you know, I'm the, I'm the one that's all, you know, Gideon in the wine press. Like, oh, no. You know, and Kelly's like, of course you can trust God. All right, well, it's laid to rest all my fears. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to be asking some things of the, the men here, you know, specific guys, to, to go with me on this journey. Now it's going to take your time. I... You're going to get hit. The devil attacks you. As soon as you start moving forward, the devil attacks you. But that's okay. I'm excited. Look at what God is doing in the earth. Look at what he's doing in America. Why wouldn't you want to be a part of that? Why wouldn't you want him to show up? So get excited. There'll be new things. No, they're not showing that. No, CNN doesn't want that to be shown. 100,000 people marching down the city of San Antonio, all peaceful, worshiping God, praying with police, praying with people that, like that guy that was crying, you know, you know that he was getting healed in that moment. 
God had opened up heaven because a whole bunch of people said, I just want to give my time. I just want to do anything that I can do to encounter God and to have him show up, heal other people, make the way for them. We're going to run forward. We're going to give our lives. We're going to give everything that we have. I know that I am. Lord, just pour out. Lord, would you just pour out? God, just direct our paths. God, that it wouldn't be the same anymore. We would be changed. That the fire in our hearts would just burn brighter and brighter and brighter. That each attack would just make us stronger, ready for the next one. That we would just run. That we would run. That we would seek, seek your face and not the gifts that you give out of your hand. God, then, and then it doesn't, it doesn't matter how that person next to us worships, worshiping you. As long as they're worshiping you, as long as they're declaring Jesus is the King from their lips, God, that we wouldn't, that we wouldn't look at the differences. We wouldn't say that there's a Catholic, that there's a Lutheran, that there's a whoever. We would just see one bride. One bride. Loving and worshiping you. Perfect unison and perfect harmony. Just like you wanted from the very beginning. God, and I ask that, that you sort them out right now. That anybody that, that anybody that is faint of heart, they would not lock in. That anybody that, that wants to serve the distractions of this world or, or go with that, that they would not lock in. God, that whoever you want for your army, whoever is ready, whoever has a willing heart, whoever is broken, willing to serve you, that they would lock in. And, and Lord, that you would change the hearts of people. They want to lock in. You know, the Bible said we are members in particular. We all have a different function. But there's one body, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. So just sitting here, this timely message. I mean, this is, this is God right now. This, this reminds me of David Wilkerson in New York going down in the middle of the gangs and the hippie movement when things were popping up, the devil's going to have a worm fit because he can't put out every fire. He thinks he got that Chicago thing silenced. That's only the beginning. But in this body, we have members that have all kinds of different functions. There are hidden parts. Those hidden parts receive the greater glory. So we're not standing here saying, you want, we want you to be just like everybody else. We want you to be you... Jesus with skin on. We want you in the closet pouring your heart out to God. We want you in the street corner shouting, Jesus Christ is Lord. We want you going to the widows and to the orphans, yeah. pouring oil. We want you to lay hands on the sick and go into the hospital and don't worry about COVID-19, oh, but yes. not whatever. Yes. Go in there and lay hands on the sick. Oh, yeah. Let them recover. There's a spirit of the living God in this place. Enahe. That's Dakota Sufer, ain't that right? And he knows that. This guy prayed for Donald Trump for hours and hours. Besides working all the kinds of contracting stuff. And uh, so, you know, there's intercessors being raised up right now. But don't look way down the road. It's not coming as here. The only problem is we can miss it if we don't. You don't move anytime you want to. You move when God's moving. So the thing this morning is just all of us just say, God, I'm putting my body on the altar, warts and all. You know, I'm, 
I got struggles, but I'm going to lay it down. And uh, because well, I'm not looking next week. What we saw, what Carl played on the videos, and what he shared from the bottom of his heart, the day is the day of salvation. A day. And there's a sweet spirit in this place. Hallelujah. Stay tuned just for a second here. You know something's happening, don't you? Stay, stay connected. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Boy, the, the hills are alive with the sound of music. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a sweet spirit. There's a sweet spirit. Eat sweet.